So there are a lot of companies that have come out in the past couple of months, especially claiming to have the ultimate solution to track your ads and attribute the right sales to the right ads and campaigns. Most of them are indeed amazing services. And when I say this, I'm thinking of apps and services like Magix or Hyros, which are both known for their amazing tracking capabilities. The main problem is apps like these can become expensive really fast if you're not already making tens of thousands of dollars daily from your ads. Fortunately, there is a free solution available for everyone to use and in fact this is already present within Facebook ads manager as well as Shopify. So in today's video I will show you how to set up UTM parameters within Facebook ads manager then how to read them through Shopify and finally I'll give you a quick tip on how you can export this data in real time through a custom dashboard that will simplify all that data for you so you can read it at ease, you know, at a quick glance whenever you want. So if you're an e-commerce store owner and you wish to keep track of 90% of your attributions through marketing, then stay tuned. My name is Justin and I'm the founder of Wizzle Media, an e-commerce marketing agency specializing in growth strategies for e-commerce businesses. So I may mispronounce this, so excuse me for my pronunciation, but UTM is an acronym for Urchin or Urkin tracking module. Urkin or Urchin was actually used prior to Google Analytics. And then when Google Analytics came out, then UTM parameters were simply transported over to Google Analytics. And now a bunch of apps and services online use these parameters to track ad results and marketing results. So there are five parameters that a UTM can track. So let's define these. So the first one is source, meaning where does that traffic come from? You know, does it come from Google? Does it come from Instagram? Does it come from Facebook? So essentially that helps you define where does that traffic come from? Second one is medium. So you're going to see on screen right now an image from Wikipedia, in fact, which shows a bit of a, I, I liked their little table that they did with all the parameters, but medium could be as an example, cost per click. So whatever type of link was used to essentially uh, run that marketing campaign. Then there's the campaign. So as simple as that, you know, if you're on Facebook, let's say what is the campaign ID of that campaign? So that way you can go back on Facebook, track whatever campaign that comes from. And you've got term, so term can be used, you know, many different ways. That could be as simple as being the ad itself. So the ad ID on Facebook. And finally, there's the content, which again, there's many ways to position that depending on what platform you advertise on. But I'll show you in just a second what string I recommend you use to track your Facebook ads. So hopping over on Facebook ads manager right now. So I'm going to put on screen right now. Take note of that. Take a screenshot, whatever you want. But there is going to be a string appearing on screen right now for you to essentially write down. And this is going to be the exact string that I'm going to be inputting right now into all of my ads on Facebook. So what you want to do is just go on your campaign, click edit. And then once you're on the campaign level, you want to go down to the ads. So in one of your ads, it's pretty simple. All you want to do is scroll all the way down on the ad and then you're going to see tracking. By default, this is probably going to be closed down like this. So you want to open that up. And then as you're going to see, you're going to have URL parameters. So you could basically it gives you two options. Either you can import one directly or you can build it yourself. So as you see right there, the one that I have right now is a little different than the one I have on screen because that one was imported a little while back. So definitely, you know, get the one that is that I showed earlier on screen rather than the one you're seeing here. So the one that I showed you on screen is essentially what it says is the source is Facebook. So I encourage you actually to change that if you would like to track it a little differently, because it may be a little confusing. You're going to see in a second as if we go on Shopify, Basically, Shopify tells you when you have UTM campaign source, it has Facebook, mobile feed, Instagram, shopping. There's a bunch of stuff. If you write simply Facebook, it essentially could be a little hard at some point to track the traffic. So you could write something really unique that would only come from your ads. So as an example, you could have in all caps FB MKT for Facebook marketing. So essentially that you're sure that this comes from your Facebook marketing campaigns. And second thing for the medium that we have in the string that is on screen right now is the placement. So placement is wherever that is. So let's say if it's on the feed, then you would see feed. If it is on stories, then you would see stories. Then campaign as simple as I mentioned earlier, the campaign ID, then the content would be the ad set and finally the ad. So you go in the same hierarchy that you use within Facebook ads manager. So campaign first, ad set second, and then ad 
third. So once you pasted that in over here, you want to click publish and then simple as that. Keep in mind though, that if you already have ads up and running right now, this will stop your ads and probably get them back in the learning phase. So pretty important to not do that. You know, if you already have good ads up and running, you don't want to basically stop them from running. So if ever you're launching new ads, new campaigns, or if you're stopping everything at some point and then starting from fresh, uh, make sure then to import those UTM parameters as then it'll be more useful to you than having to stop your current ads. So it's as simple as this within Facebook. And now there's two ways to track these parameters afterwards. The simple way and what I recommend to literally all e-commerce store owners is through Shopify. I know some of you may not be on Shopify, which I'm going to show you another way of tracking those parameters in just a second. But first and foremost, let me show you where you can find this data within Shopify. So you want to swap over to your Shopify dashboard, you want to log in. And then once this is done, you want to head over to analytics and reports. So once you're on reports, you want to scroll down to the marketing section, you're going to see sales attributed to marketing. So click on that. By default, all it tells you is UTM campaign is not NA. you want to click off of that and you want to import your own filter. So I would put your source here as we defined that earlier as being something unique. So I would add UTM campaign source is and then from there, I would basically pick whatever you imported essentially for that. So as you saw earlier, what I currently have is FB ads. So I know this comes from Facebook ads for you it could be FB MKT it could simply be Facebook, whatever that is. So here I would click on FB ads. And uh, I would also pick ads as I, I know we used to have that uh, essentially running for this client. So I would go apply filters as, as you can see right now for the time period selected. So July 4 to August 3rd with this tag. Again, we literally just changed the tags a couple of days ago. Uh, essentially, you have three orders for this campaign. So in the summary, pretty simple, you have the campaign ID. So that allows me essentially to copy that go back in Facebook and then see what that campaign was actually going about. So what was it a promo? Was it just a regular evergreen campaign? And then from there allows us to better track the data and then compare what Facebook has versus what Shopify has in terms of data. So in sum, it's as simple as that it literally is setting that up on Facebook. And as we had said earlier, those variables, as you saw within brackets, it's all going to change dynamically within Shopify. So whatever ad set ID is present on Facebook, it's what you're going to find on Shopify, whatever campaign name was present on Facebook, it's what you're also going to find on Shopify. So here I went about campaign source, you can also go about different ways. If you want to, if you want to see, let's say how a specific campaign perform, then you could simply type the specific campaign name, and then you're going to find those results within Shopify. At the moment, this is one of the best ways to track your ads. It is not 100% accurate. Let me tell you that. So it is about 90% accurate, I'd say in some cases, it could be actually a little lower. But this combined with Facebook literally is the best way for you to track things right now. To give you an example, Earlier this past week, we had done a campaign for one of our clients with a promo code actually it just ended a couple weeks ago. Um, I'm saying last week, but I think it was last month. And that campaign had a specific promo code. So it was super easy to track those sales within Shopify as there was no other marketing methods that was used to broadcast this specific discount code. But Facebook was showing us five sales, whereas if we went on Shopify, we were seeing eight. So this essentially just shows you the difference between the two. And obviously Shopify is going to be more accurate for such discounts. But sometimes if you're only going to go about campaign source and campaign lane, like what I'm showing you right now, then it may be a little harder and not as accurate. But again, it is the best solution right now. And it is much better than simply relying on Facebook. That's why we recommend all of our clients to do that. In fact, if they don't already have that set up, we do it for them. So all the ads that we run, we have our specific UTM parameters that we import, which is the same one that I showed you earlier, allows us to better track these ads results. And then sometimes again, as I told you earlier, having five versus eight sales is really important because five sales could show us a ROAS of two words. If we had eight, it could show us something like 3.5 as an example. So really is important to see that as this could change the results within Facebook. And we could basically stop a campaign that is indeed performing super, super well. So it's really important to 
get the right attributions to make sure that you optimize the right ads at the right time. Then second way I want to show you on how to see those UTM parameters through Google Analytics. So if you have not set that up yet on your website, I strongly encourage you to do that. It's super simple to do it with Shopify. I know they have bunch of documentation on that super easy also with all WordPress websites and literally is one of the easiest things to install on your site. So once this is done and installed, you just want to head over to your Google Analytics page. You want to head on the side on the navigation bar to acquisition campaigns and all campaigns. So from there, as you're going to see same thing as earlier, I have all the campaign names over there. So those would all be Facebook ad campaigns. I could also switch that up to source and then see the different source of so Facebook ads is the same thing that I showed you earlier. As I told you, we also just integrated the FB MKT for some ads. There's also just ads. So we've been testing out a bunch of stuff recently. So I strongly recommend you do not do what I'm telling you right now as really stick to one campaign source. It's going to be much easier for you to track stuff in the long run and stick to something that you know is going to be easy for you to track later on. So as you're there, it's basically the same thing as Shopify. You see per campaign source, you see the users, new users, sessions, bounce rate, page session, you know, average duration and four conversions. Uh, that's, you know, something by default, it may not necessarily be set up that way. If it's not just simply put that to conversions for e commerce, then you see the conversion rate per uh, essentially per uh, channel, and then you have the transactions and revenue. So all in all, essentially, this is good for you to see it's basically the same way as doing it with Facebook. But if you're basically running, let's say a WooCommerce store, or if you really want to make sure that your Shopify store is telling you some accurate data, then you can also compare with Google. So you may see some discrepancies between Google and Shopify. It is normal. But again, I would basically use a combination of all three. So Facebook, Google and Shopify to gauge where you're at with the results. But if you are using those uh, those codes that I told you about earlier, so discount codes within Shopify, it's basically the easiest way for you to track stuff right now. But Shopify and Google in combination together with Facebook tells you the big picture of how your ads are performing. And the last thing I want to show you right now, as mentioned earlier, is how can you export this data into something else that will simplify this data for you and show you everything you need to know in real time as well as combine your data from Facebook and Shopify. So I won't go into too many details as uh, it's pretty long and it could be a full fledged video to just show you how to do this. So if this is something you want to see, let me know in the comments down below and I'll make a specific and separate video on how to export all of this data and how to create that dashboard. But to simplify things right now, what you can do is head over to supermetrics.com. So supermetrics is this company that basically integrates a bunch of apps together for you to simplify that data. So one of them that you want to use right now is Supermetrics for Data Studio. So what this will allow you to do is install a custom app on Shopify. I'm sure you already have some apps installed on Shopify. As an example, you know, you could have Oberlo, you could have, uh, you know, there's a bunch of stuff that you can do on Shopify with apps. But Nonetheless, you could install that app on Shopify. It is paid, I must say. So I'm throwing that out there. This is a paid option, but still much cheaper than going with services like Hyros or Magix again. So first step is going manually. You know, if you're just starting out with your ads, you can go manually essentially within Shopify. Just look at stuff the way I showed you earlier. I'd say second step is going with something like this. You install this app. What this will do, if you do not know what Google Data Studio is, is basically this platform on Google servers, which allow you to create really cool dashboards that simplify all the data for you. So you can create graphs, you can create tables, whatever that is, but this could all be connected to your Shopify and your Facebook ads. And that way, all the data would be imported into this dashboard for you. So you would see everything in the same place. You could compare how Facebook results are showing, how Shopify's results are, and then Essentially, this gives you just a big picture of how your ads are performing, but all in the same place. You don't have to go through Shopify, scroll again to the reporting section, check for all your campaign name. Everything would literally be on the same place within Google. So it simplifies everything for you. So if this is something, again, that you're interested in seeing how to do, then I encourage you to leave a comment down below and let me know. But if not, just head over to Supermetrics. I know there's some tutorials online also showcasing that. But uh, that's it. That's definitely the good way to go about things once you start having a bit of attraction with your ads. And again, I don't discourage people from going with services like Hyros or Magix and all of these apps. They definitely are really, really good services. I know a lot of people are using them or super satisfied with them. 
Hyros, as an example, integrates directly within Facebook, and then you have your regular Facebook ads result, as well as you show what Hyros says. So Hyros tracks all of your results essentially from start. So if somebody sees one of your ads right now and doesn't buy three months from now, they get a text message from you, another six months to get an email, and then they finally buy, well, you're gonna see all of that customer journey within Hyro. So it's super, super good to track where your customers actually come from and also is really accurate with your ads. But it does cost a little more and that's normal. It's a bit more of a complex service and a bit of a full-fledged solution. So definitely you can go with something like this. But I'd say, as I mentioned earlier, your first step is doing it yourself the old way within Shopify and Google Analytics. Second ways with Supermetrics. And lastly, I'd go with something like Hyros. So with all of that being said, make sure to set up those UTM parameters as soon as possible. As mentioned earlier, this will stop your ads and we'll put them back in the learning phase if you do this. So make sure to do this only with new ads, new campaigns. If you're already planning on starting everything over, then make sure to do that as you start everything and before you get those ads alive and in the learning phase or out of the learning phase now if you're unsure about the best facebook ads strategies for your e-commerce business and you really want to take things to the next level so if you're making over ten thousand dollars a month right now and you really want to get past that 30 50 hundred thousand dollars a month mark then make sure to go in the description down below book in a short demo call with myself. So this is going to be just a really quick 15 minute, no commitment demo call where we just have a really casual chat about your business, see where you're at and see if you'd be a good fit for our marketing program. So with that being said, I invite you to check out other videos on the channel, giving you a bunch of useful tips on how to run ads for your e-commerce business. And I'm going to leave you guys at that. So have a great week and see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye.